Hello, welcome to the lecture number 35 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the last class, we talked about the rotations of the polyatomic molecules and discussed the spherical rotors. In this lecture, we will talk about the symmetric rotor and asymmetric rotor. Now, in the case of a symmetric rotor, two of the rotational constants, let us call it as IB and IC, they are equal and this is not equal to IA. Further, we will also consider IA not equal to 0. Okay? If IA is equal to 0, then it will of course, it will become a linear molecule. Now, in this case, there are major, two major axis of rotation. Okay? IA and IB, of course, since they are equal, you will not be able to distinguish. But since IB and IC are equal, you will not be able to distinguish rotations around IB and IC or axis B and C, but IA will be different. So, in such case, you will have total angular momentum J, which will be around the axis you know, uh, B and C. So, that will have the values 1, 2, etc. And to represent the rotation along uh, A axis, you will have additional quantum number K, which will take the values of j, j minus 1, uh, etc, etc, 0, minus 1, minus 2, etc up to j. Okay. Now, this is something that is already familiar to you. What is that? This is like your orbital angular momentum. L and the uh, rotational angular momentum ML in the case of hydrogen atom. Okay. Okay. It turns out that the energy for this Will be. Of course, you will see that you know k will have 2j plus 1 possibilities. In such scenario, your, your <coughs> i square a by omega a square plus i square b omega b square plus i square c omega c square will be equal to j into j plus 1 h bar square. And in addition, this is the total angular momentum. Apart from that, you have i a square omega a square will be equal to k square h bar square. And so, your energy, total energy will be e j k is equal to half sum over i And from this, what you will get is the following. So, your energy of j k will be equal to b into j, j plus 1 minus, sorry, plus a minus b into k square. So, when you have such an equation, you will see it will depend on the value of absolute value of k and plus k or minus k will not. So, similar to the ml values. Okay. So, the ML value does not, even poly, atom, uh, poly electron atoms, ML value does not change the energy, only the L value changes the energy. Similarly, in this case, the value of K will not change the energy. Okay. So, now, if you had <coughs> IB equals to IC and not equal to IA and IA is not equal to 0 then you have delta j transitions, delta j is equal to j minus j prime. So, going from or j prime 
j prime minus j double prime from going from one value of j to other value of j. Now, if you now subtract this delta E will be equal to B j prime j prime plus 1 plus a minus b k square minus b j double prime j double prime plus 1 plus a minus b k square. So, if you take this, this will be nothing but 2 b j into j plus 1 when j prime is equal to j plus 1. Okay. That is because that is because you know this is the selection rule for j. Okay. j double prime is equal to j plus 1. Now, we will see delta E does not have any k component. Okay. Okay. Within the rigid rotor approximation, you will see that the symmetric rotor, for symmetric rotors, the k has almost no, uh, almost um, not k, for the symmetric rotor, the k has no contribution to the rotational spectrum. But that is not always true because that is under rigid rotor approximation, okay. Within However, if it is not rigid, so if there is in the presence of in the presence of centrifugal distortion, if you have centrifugal distortion and let us call the centrifugal distortion as uh, dj d k and of course, you know there is always a mixing term that is the d j k. Okay. Now, in that case your energy is given by of j and k is given by b j into j plus 1 plus a minus b k square minus d j j square plus j plus 1 whole square minus d j k to j into j plus 1 k square minus d k into k to the power of 4. Okay. Now, if you take delta E between j and j prime, j prime and j double prime with delta j is equal to 1, then what you will get is that 2 j plus 1 into p minus 2 d j into j plus 1 square minus d j k into k square. Okay, now, we will start and see that this will depend on the value of k and the centrifugal distortion constant d j k. So, only when you have the centrifugal distortion or when the molecule is no longer rigid rotor, then you will start seeing the effects of the uh, 
the k, the rotational constant k. Okay. So, what will happen then? The values of the values will move up and down, okay, depending on the value of k, uh, sorry, value of dj. You generally, we generally know that the, when you have rotational, uh, we generally know when you have centrifugal distortion because of this, okay, the lines come closer. And now you have one more quantity, so the line becomes even more closer, okay, because the value of k and that goes as the value of k square. So, which means as the k keeps increasing, okay, the uh, rotational constants are uh, sorry, rotational levels are more and more closely spaced. Okay. Now, in the case of uh, asymmetric rotor, then you will see that I A is not equal to I B is not equal to I C. So, in principle one could have three rotational constants. So, we will we'll have J and one will have K and one will have K prime. Okay. So, the analysis of spectrum becomes even more difficult. So, one way to look at is that when you have J and what you do is that you think that k is approximately equal to k prime. Okay. When k is approximately equal, so any of the two rotational constants are close to each other than the third one. Okay. Oh, sorry, this has to be not equal. Okay. So, when any two of them are very close to each other, then what you can think of is the same treatment under this approximation, one can do the same treatment as a symmetric rotor. It is a possibility, okay. but this cannot be guaranteed, then it becomes even more complicated, okay. but one can think of, okay. then your energy value will depend on you know, uh, A minus B and B minus C and C minus, so this will be much more complicated. However, one can do an approximation when K is almost equal to K prime, that means two of the rotational constants are very close to each other and third one is much larger, then one can do a treatment which is very similar to the symmetric rotors. Okay. But having all this, one of the things that you must remember it is the rotation transitions. are generally divided by j to j prime or j prime to j double prime with delta j is equal to plus minus 1 and delta k is equal to 0. So, this is the uh, selection rule, selection rule for the polyatomic molecules. We will stop here and continue in the next lecture. Thank you.